you ever know that in your life that you're actually able to take some amazing pictures of nebulae and galaxies in space with just a telescope like this one behind me? Yes, you heard me. You can take outstanding pictures just like Hubble's and James Webb's just with a telescope like this pictured right behind me. Yes, even though it will cost a few hundred bucks or a thousand depending on what your choice is, these telescopes are designed for taking amazing pictures of space. And I want to be showcasing my telescope that I take pictures of from my backyard that gives me all of my pictures that I've ever taken in the past one and a half years of doing deep sky astrophotography from the backyard. The featured nebula tonight is going to be the Crescent Nebula and I'm super excited to show you this image at the end of this video. So come along with me as I show you the amazing features of this telescope behind me, the Espivoni SB503 80mm telescope. This is Tanner from AstroTan and welcome to the YouTube channel. So yes, I know, the first question you're going to ask is, what's the difference between a telescope like this and a regular telescope that you can buy for $50 or $60? And that answer all comes down to you and the glass that's inside this telescope. See, telescopes that have one single element of glass are called acrochromatic refractors, and this is called a refractor telescope. This is the standard telescope that you'll see around everywhere. It's probably the most popular telescope out there for visual and a good amount of astrophotographers. And these telescopes telescopes use a focuser on the back and just a glass element on the top of the telescope to focus the light coming in and this is the red green and blue light this light is very important because stars emit a wide spectrum of color mainly these telescopes originally with only a single element of glass have a lot of trouble focusing all the light in one place sometimes the colors will be a little spread out if you use a single element refractor and this one solves the problem by having two glass elements in here. They also solve this issue by using ED glass, or extra low dispersion glass. And this will help make that focusing of those red, green, and blue colors extra tight. With two glass elements, this will also really help tone in on those colors and that clarity in comparison to just a single element telescope. Now this is pretty standard as to how many glass elements are needed for an astrophotography telescope. And astrophotography telescopes are sometimes called astrographs. Now this telescope is the SV Boney SV503 and it's a almost $450 telescope that I got on Amazon around a year and a half ago. There wasn't much about it at the time, but over this entire journey of taking astrophotography, this has proved to be one of my favorite things, part of my setup. Another word for a telescope that has two glass elements are called doublet refractors, and they really go up from there. So they can go from triplets to quadruplets, to even five glass elements, and that's if you really want some insane results. But I think a doublet refractor is just fine for taking some amazing pictures of space. And if you're a real scientific, or if you wanna take something really advanced, then you might wanna go for a more expensive telescope down the line. This telescope features a rack and pinion focuser, and that is extremely important. Let me tell you why. When you focus a refractor telescope, you wanna make sure that you keep all those red, green, and blue colors all in one place, right? Well, this comes down to two things. This comes down to obviously the glass elements in the telescope and it also comes down to the focuser. If you have a plastic or cheap focuser overnight when the temperatures drop or if the temperatures warm up for whatever reason, that will actually knock the focusing out of place because it'll actually move the glass in places that you don't want it to be in result of the temperature change. This doesn't pose much of a problem for me overnight because I really keep my focus at its best position once I let my telescope get used to the temperature by leaving it out there for 30 or 45 minutes. But having a super smooth focuser is very important if you want sharp or blurry pictures of your target. And one thing you might see on your telescope is that there's actually two focusers instead of one. This is called a dual speed focuser and these are really important when really refining your focus. The big focuser is really used for getting the general aspect of your focus ready and then use that other focuser, that really fine detail focuser to really hone in on those sharp stars. We also use something called a Batnov mask to focus our telescopes and this is not just for refractors by the way. And the whole general idea idea behind these Batnov masks is the same. The Batnov mask will make the stars have a certain star spike pattern 
and that middle spike, there'll be an X and there will also be a middle stripe right in there. And that middle stripe basically tells you where your focus is at. If that little spike is not in the middle, then that means you need to focus now. If your star spike is right in the middle, then you are in some perfect focus. So if you wanna take a picture of a nebula or galaxy in space, make sure you choose the right telescope that's best for you. There can be wide field telescopes, there can be really big telescopes for galaxies. Just make sure that whatever you're choosing is an astrograph telescope for the best results. This will be like a telescope like mine, this could be a telescope like a Newtonian astrograph. Any kind of telescope that is designed for astrophotography will give you the best results and you will definitely avoid a lot of those bumps in the road. Before we talk about the Crescent Nebula though, I know you guys can't see the temperature or feel the temperature out here, but it is getting cold and I am actually super excited for this. I'm sorry to whoever loves summer, I mean I love summer too, but I am getting sick of this hot, hot weather. I've been hearing on the news lately for North America that this has been one of the hottest summers on record and I definitely agree with that. It has been really uncomfortable being out here when it's really hot out, when it's like 85 degrees out at night and my camera can't cool down to what I want it to it kind of gets a little bit annoying so I'm kind of glad that fall is finally starting to be here and I'm just sick of wearing all these shorts and just sweating like crazy every single day the temperatures tonight are supposed to be almost around 53 or 50 degrees tonight and I'm super excited for that because that is one of the most comfortable temperatures for being out there oh shoot that temperature is like the dew point and you don't even want to know what dew point is. So another thing I've noticed is that the leaves are starting to change on some of my trees out in the front yard. And I used to set up back there. It's crazy because it's still like 75 degrees out in the daytime. And even though that's going to start going down, I'm kind of surprised that those trees are already starting to change. So yeah, and you guys already know, I talked about this in my other video recently that along with the temperatures going down, those come with the longer nights. And I'm super excited for these longer nights because as you can see, I have a clear obstruction. And I'm very fortunate to have that, by the way. I don't brag about it. So let's go and do some little research on what we're actually taking a picture of tonight. The Crescent Nebula is also called NGC 6888 and let's be honest, nobody calls it that, but you know, it's what they call it. But it is an Hydrogen Alpha and O3 emission nebula located in the constellation of, I don't even want to say what constellation it's in because you guys will flame me in the comments. Okay, okay, okay. It's located in the constellation of Cygnus. I'm sorry, and I promise this time, this is the last time I'm going to be taking a picture of anything in Cygnus this year. I promise. I pinky promise. If I break this promise, then you can unsubscribe for me right now. But it is a really awesome target, and I really can't wait to get a lot of that O3 tonight. That covers the entire crescent nebula in kind of like a little circle. There's also a little hidden feature there called the soap bubble nebula and that's also an O3 emission line and it's just like a little ring and it looks really cool. I, I've seen a lot of advanced astrophotographers take a picture of this separately from the crescent nebula and they did it in really high resolution and even though my image won't be like that I still be super excited to see this in my final image itself. As before we get things going for tonight, I just had to show you guys something that made me stop recording. So I don't know if you guys know, but during the fall, winter, and early spring months, a lot of owls like to come out. And these owls really in America are the great horned owls. And I just saw an owl that is already here. And let me show you guys where he's at. So if you guys just saw that, this is absolutely blowing my socks off because these owls are not supposed to be here right now. It is, they are way ahead of schedule here and I love taking pictures of these owls and this owl has been with me on countless nights. I know that this is the owl that is always sitting around here in my backyard over by the trees way over there. So I cannot believe that it's already here and this is getting me super excited for the fall season as much as I've already said I'm excited for it already. The stage is set and I am really excited to get things going. I cannot keep saying this. 
and I think it's gonna be a perfect night. It is a Saturday night. It is the time to relax and let's get imaging, let's get set up and let's get going. As always are looking phenomenal we're getting perfect subs right now and tonight is a rather different night I would say tonight I feel like is a night to reflect on where I've been how I'm doing and what brought me up to this moment and I also just want to share that my telescope that I've been showing you guys has been the only thing in my setup that hasn't changed ever since I've done deep sky astrophotography. Everything has been sold, given to a new person, or replaced, and it's just mind-boggling to me that my telescope has been with me this entire time, and I haven't even thought of it. It's been with me to countless places like my lake house, Cherry Springs, and in two separate backyards. And it's just insane because I feel like, in the most crazy way possible of saying this, that my telescope is out here with me enjoying this moment. And I feel like my telescope is like a part of me when I'm taking these pictures. And I feel like it's like part of my astrophotography little family that I have here in the backyard. It's a telescope that I am extremely attached to now. And the fact that it's just been with me everywhere taking a bunch of images and a bunch of mind-boggling pictures of space for me is just crazy to me and I don't even recognize it at all. I don't appreciate the telescope, I don't give it a high five or anything, but it is out here doing the work for me every single night, all out here alone. And even though some of those nights I'm out here with it, just the fact that it's out here just taking pictures of space hundreds of thousands of light years away to all these objects and it's just over here just in my backyard just taking these pictures and I feel like I just will never want to get rid of my telescope that I have now I feel like I feel like when I'm an adult and maybe I have a family that I will be able to still use this same telescope that I have and show younger people and say, hey, this was my telescope that I used to take these pictures when I was a kid. And that's just a dream of mine that I have in the back of my head. I don't ever want to get rid of this telescope because of the amazing things that it's done for me. As crazy as that sounds, it just feels like it's part of the family back here. And um, it definitely gets me emotional thinking about it, but... I just, I can't, I can't describe the connection I have to this telescope that I'm using and the fact that it's just been out here with me night after night, countless nights, just out here with me is just crazy to me. And hopefully this telescope years from now 
will share that same experience. Maybe if it doesn't share it with me anymore, it will be passed down and shared with somebody else who will enjoy the amazing hobby of astrophotography. It's something I don't really think about, but now that it's just one of these nights, it's just something that I really am thinking about in the future, and I hope that its legacy will just carry on. So this is going to conclude the video, and now it's time for the image reveal. I'll see you guys next time. Clear skies.